Yes, 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 guys. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. FPL Managers, the 21-22 season has finally finished. It's been a long, long, long season. COVID cancellations, double game weeks, extra chips being used. It's been a chaotic season. Um, now we can have a bit of a break for most FPL managers come back in the summer uh, and be really fresh for the 22-23 season. Well done if you had a top 50k finish, top 10k finish, maybe even a top 1k finish, or if you just made a seasonal season improvement, that's absolutely fine as well. And well done to you guys. So in this video, um, I've been working behind the scenes already, sort of the back end of the 21-22 season, preparing for what the schedule could look like for the 22-23 season, up until about the Christmas period, sort of post-World Cup. So that's what this video is all about. Um, there's loads to sort of get into. If you haven't liked this video already, please give it a thumbs up. It does help with the YouTube algorithm in terms of landing on other people's feeds. And also, if you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel and click that notification bell, what you're waiting for just literally takes one second, push that button, and you're ready to go. Content coming in every three or four days. Without further ado, let's dive into the video. I hope you guys enjoy this one. Okay, guys, so this part here, we're going to break down into three parts, okay? So part one is what you can see in front of you now. It's kind of what the numbers look like in terms of quantity of games. I mean, weekends are available, midweeks, international break, etc. Part two is more spreadsheet-based, what the, the schedule could look like. So you could get a bit of a visualisation there. And part three is what it could mean for FPL going forward, okay? So we know the season starts on the 6th of August. The season has been brought forward because of the, the Winter World Cup. And it will be extended at the end of May as well. We know the Premier League have announced there's going to be 16 Premier League games to take part before the, the Winter World Cup. There are 15 weekends and 14 midweeks available. But straight away, 16 doesn't go into 15 weekends. We've got to make it up somewhere else. Now, on top of that, there is one international break. Normally, there are three pre-Christmas. sort of Christmas. Um, So this one international break will last 10 to 14 days, depending on what way you look at it. Therefore, there are only 14 weekends and 12 midweeks. So you lose one weekend during that international break, but you lose two midweeks. If that makes sense if you're still with me. So straight away, 14 weekends available, 14 of their Premier League fixtures can go into those slots. Therefore, there are only two uh, fixtures sort of to be rearranged, if you like, or to be slotted in. On top of that, there are six European um, fixtures, so or midweeks. So that's Champions League, Europa League, Europa Conference. On top of that, there is going to be one or two Carabao Cup games. That's all dependent on if you're playing in Europe or if you're not. Um, therefore, there are only four free midweeks uh, for two further game weeks. So those two Premier League games that haven't been slotted in, there are actually, actually only four uh, free midweeks for those to be slotted in. Um, so if all that goes into, so take all that into account, that only gives potentially teams like Liverpool, for example, or uh, Man City, two free midweeks in the first three months of the season okay so straight away you might be making some some conclusions of what this could look like for the fpl community and what that means for for players and rotation that kind of thing which we'll dive into a little bit later on in part three next part we can look at is a bit of a spreadsheet in terms of what the schedule could look like okay guys so this is sort of part two the spreadsheet the visualization okay so first thing to sort of mention is please forgive me <laughs> the green screen doesn't work particularly well over a white spreadsheet. So if I do look a bit fuzzy, forgive me. Hopefully the content and the spreadsheet will make up for it. First thing I want to draw your attention to is the top right hand side. There's a bit of a key sort of slash fixer type. Each one is sort of highlighted in different colour. There's also a couple of key important dates in there as well. Um, so pause the screen if you need to, take a picture of this, whatever, take a screenshot, absolutely fine, not a problem. So first thing I sort of want to touch on is although the, the Premier League season starts on the 6th of August. I've actually started it from the, the 31st of July, which is a community issue. OK, so Liverpool and Man City are going to be playing each other in that game. The reason why I sort of put that in is because although it will be used, traditionally the community issue is used for pre-season sort of fitness, etc., especially for players maybe that come back late from an international tournament. However, there won't be an international tournament. So this will be an intense game immediately. So Liverpool and Man City will probably play the most games throughout the season. Straight away, it's going to be an intense, intense game. OK. And obviously, you want to try and get one over your rival. The Premier League, which is highlighted in the dark green, starts on the 6th of August. OK, so we've got the 6th of August, the 13th of August, the 20th of August, 27th, all the way through 
up until the 12th of November. OK, guys, so that's sort of 14 Premier League fixtures straight away slotted in at the weekend. OK, so for the purpose of this, the 6th of August, for example, is a Saturday. I've just kept everything for a Saturday game. And obviously the Premier League can be on a Friday, Saturday, Sunday or Monday. But for the purpose of this, just put it on the Saturday. Um, so that's 14. OK, the just want to draw you to the um, 6th of September. OK, guys, so you've now got a sort of a, a, a lighter blue. OK, so that is the Tuesday, um, the 6th of September and the 7th of September. They are Champions League nights. OK, so Tuesday and the Wednesday, we know obviously that's going to be Liverpool, Man City, Chelsea. And the time of recording, we don't know if it's going to be Arsenal, if it's going to be Spurs. OK, so it's going to be one of those taking place in the Champions League. And as you can see, there is some back-to-back -back Champions League games, OK? So, for example, midweeks, 6th and the 7th Champions League, following midweek, 13th and the 14th of September, also Champions League, OK? Likewise, with <clears throat> if you look on the 8th of September, the one in yellow, that is the Europa League and the Conference League. Again, they've got back-to-back -back games. So there's going to be plenty of games in a row for these teams, European games. Um, so, yeah, the, the Champions League, going back to the blue, so you play two sort of games in September, then you play three games in October, so you've got back-to-back -back weeks, 4th and the 5th of October into the 11th and the 12th of October, um, and then also the 25th and the 26th of October before they have their final group game on the 1st and the 2nd of November. And then obviously on the Thursday after those Champions League days, or the Tuesday or the, or the Wednesday, um, there's going to be obviously the Europa League and the Europa Conference, i.e. the 6th of October, 13th of October, the 27th of October, and the 3rd of November, OK? On top of that, you can see there's a bit of a sort of a 10-bit, 10 10-part, 10 uh, 10 days, should I say, of international break in the red, OK? So, obviously, the players are only going to be away for sort of 10 days. However, the 28th and the 29th and the 30th, obviously, that's part of the international break. There'll be no games uh, during that period for the, for the Premier League. So, it's kind of a 10-day slash 14-day, depending on the way you look at it, for the international break. Um, there'll be obviously no domestic European games or um, Premier League games during that period. Um, finally, it's one of, or not finally, sorry, the, the World Cup is starts, um, the players have to be released on the 14th of, um, of November. Okay, so that means, you know, the clubs have to let them go, etc. So they'll go on the 14th of November. I think the World Cup starts maybe a week later around the sort of the 21st. And it finish the finals on the 18th of December. So you've got a you know a decent stretch of sort of five five weeks or so for the World Cup. Purple one's a bit of an interesting one. So now we've got the Carabao Cup. So there's there's sort of three three sort of dates that I highlighted on here. The 22nd of August. So that is the second round of the Carabao Cup. That will be for the teams that aren't playing in Europe. So traditionally that'll be sort of 13 teams um, entering the Carabao Cup on the 22nd of August. Okay. Then we're going to fast forward to the, the 9th of November, which is the third round of the Carabao Cup. And that's quite late for the third round. Normally, it sort of takes place and maybe after the international, the first international break in September for the European teams to sort of come into play. However, because of the, like I touched on earlier, the Champions League and the Europa Conference, Europa League, um, that's sort of the slot available for the third round for the seven remaining or six slash seven remaining uh, European teams in the Premier League to sort of partake and, and start their, their Carabao Cup campaign. Um, and then also there's going to be the fourth round on the 21st of December. OK, so actually after the World Cup, the first game back isn't a Premier League game. It's actually a Carabao Cup game So for, for most teams. So obviously certain teams will be knocked out of the Carabao Cup. Therefore, their first game back will be on the 26th of December. So I can just touch on there. The Premier League, which is in black here, um, we'll start on the 26th of December. So if you're knocked out in the Carabao Cup, you have your first game back. You'll have a, maybe a 10-day period of, or eight-day period if you get to the, the World Cup final to sort of refresh and revitalise yourself, re-energise yourself before the Premier League starts. However, if you're in the Carabao Cup, then obviously you've got, I'd imagine you probably won't be playing in <laughs> on the 21st of December in the fourth round of the Carabao Cup. A um, couple of other things to sort of mention is, um, you've got this sort of, lighter shaded green which is super cup okay so that is if you go over to the left hand side the 10th of august that is a super cup and i'll highlight that there's obviously two 
August attempts on here, one that's in white, one that's in sort of a lighter green. That will be, if Liverpool obviously win the, the Champions League, they'll be playing Frankfurt on the 10th. Therefore, which, which kind of moves me on nicely to the, the lighter blue, okay? So, which is, if you go to the 9th of August and the 10th of August, which is obviously just above the Super Cup, we have got four of these slots. So, 9th and 10th of, of August, which is a kind of a Tuesday, Wednesday, guys. 15th, 16th of August, 29th, 30th of August, and then 18th and 19th of October. They are the only four, four midweeks available or three midweeks. OK, so from them four, what we said earlier on, there's two Premier League games to be sort of penciled in. So in those weeks, Premier League games will be penciled in. Whether they want to start off the, the Premier League campaign with um, midweek on the 6th of August, then straight away, so weekend, the 6th of August, midweek, and then Premier League, maybe they might want to do that. However, Liverpool obviously can't play if they do get to the Super Cup and if they win the Champions League. Um, so I don't think they maybe want to give Liverpool a disadvantage immediately. Um, so they might just, so for someone like Liverpool, they will only have three possible, um, you know, times to rearrange, um, or well, not rearranged, sorry, to, to slot those games in. So for Liverpool, 15th, 16th of August, 29th and the 30th of August, and 18th and 19th of October, if they play the Super Cup, they've got to fit two of those three games in those midweeks, OK? So there is very, very minimal time for players off. Obviously, I'm talking predominantly with the European teams here, guys. These are the ones, these are the players that, in FPL terms, we kind of want to back and get in our, in our teams, like the likes of Mo Salah, you know, Kevin De Bruyne, Haaland, when he's signs for Manchester City, and other signings that you might want to bring in, Diaz, for example, Liverpool. So it's absolutely chaotic. Hopefully, you guys can see what it's going to look like for the first three, three and a half months of the season. It's going to be absolutely mental. August, September, October, November, the first four and a half months of the season into December. There's very, very minimal time off. Obviously, the teams that don't play in Europe will have more time off. But the teams that do play in Europe, it's going to be it's going to be difficult for the likes of Pep and, and Jürgen and Thomas Tuchel um, and even Mikel Arteta slash and, and Conte and other, other managers as well that play in Europe. So this leads me on quite nicely to the next slide, which is what it means for FPL. OK, moving on to graphic number three. This is where we talk about FPL a bit more. OK, so how will the World Cup be planted in the middle of the season affect us? How will the potential schedule affect us playing FPL as well for the 22-23 season? Okay, the first thing to note is fixtures are released on the 16th of June, 9 a.m. traditionally UK time. So pencil that in your diaries, turn on your notifications on the app. Next thing to note is there are 99 days from game week one to game week 16, OK? So it doesn't seem... It's, well, initially, it seems like a reasonable amount of days, but then if you think about it, there are going to be international break, there's going to be uh, European games in that period, Carabao Cup, etc. So 99 days, day, sorry, doesn't seem like a, a huge amount for all those games. Next up, we're going to use sort of Liverpool and Mo Salah as a couple of examples, OK? They're extreme examples, but realistic at the same time. So Liverpool will have a minimum of 23 games during this period. That's a game every 4.3 days. Potentially have 24 if they play the Super Cup. That's a game every 4.1 days. Now, traditionally for the big boys, they would maybe have the first three to four weeks having just one game a week. And then maybe after the first international break, they'll have two games a week. However, there is a realistic possibility that they could have to have two games a week immediately. You know, hit the ground running immediately, which is something we've got to think about. You know, after the, the pre-season, will everyone be up to speed immediately? Will there be more rotation, which we're just going to discuss a bit further shortly? That's something to bear in mind. Mo Salah, he will have a minimum of 25 games for club and country. Egypt have got two games during the international break, a couple of qualifiers for the AFCON. Um, so that's a game every 3.96 days. Obviously, if they reach the Super Cup final, Liverpool that is, then he'll have a game every 3.8 days. Now, I don't think Salah will play all those games, but there's something to just bear in mind that probably will be more rotation or more substitutions coming on, coming off, etc. Okay. That takes me nicely to the introduction of the new law in terms of the five sub law. Okay. So that will be introduced for the Premier League season in the 22-23 season. Hopefully it's happened during the European games, the Champions League games, etc. This season. It's something that for me it's a long time coming. It should have happened maybe during the COVID period, i.e. maybe season 
just finished or the season even before that as well. Okay, um, it just makes more sense. Obviously, that's this is going to affect us in terms of FPL because you know these managers, especially the teams that may be playing in in, in Europe, will probably want to try and utilize the squad even more to make sure players don't get injured, don't get fatigued. So there will be more substitutions. Now, whether there will be more for the teams that play lower down in the league, you could argue maybe in situations where, say for example, there is a game on the on the Saturday and uh, Fulham are playing uh, Man City. They're losing four 0 after thirty minutes. They might think actually at half time we'll rest a couple of players because we've got a big game against someone that's lower down in the division um, and rest some players. So that's something to bear in mind as well. Okay. Just need to plug in my charger. One second, guys. Okay. Yeah, so th there's going to be more substitutions. There's going to be more rotation as well. Okay, so that's something to really, really bear in mind. Obviously, we haven't got any um, samples to sort of to go through and have a have a look and sort of dissect and analyze the data. But there's something to sort of bear in mind. For me, immediately on the back of this, I'm thinking I probably want to have less European players. Now, obviously, it does depend on maybe how the, the draw uh, of these European competitions play out because, you know, it's more likely that lots of Mo Salah will probably play um, the Premier League game. Say, for example, they've got a game at the weekend and they've got Champions League and they're playing someone seeded four at home. you will probably get a rest of the Champions League game and probably play more in the Premier League. So that's something to bear in mind. So that's something we've got to kind of evaluate and process as we go along. Um, but for me, less players I'll probably want in, in Europe. I'll probably be thinking about players who, you know, someone like Leicester, for example, who won't play in Europe, but will have the lots of maybe Madison, Vardy, they, those players will probably play 90 minutes or close to 90 minutes uh, week in, week out. So there's something to bear in mind. Do we target more 90 minute players? You know, do we think about, uh, I'm not, this is probably a bad example, but do we think of someone like Declan Rice, who's probably going to play 90 minutes week in, week out? Okay, granted, they do have the Open Conference. That's a bad example. But there is, you've got to think about certain players who play 90 minutes who, who may, you know, the, the certain players, certain positions you probably want to think about. Like, let's use a different example. If you go through their team right now, I would say for next season that players that are really, really secure, that, are, that won't get subbed off, are probably Alisson, the goalkeeper, Van Dyke, and probably Van Dyke's partner. I, I don't think there's going to be anyone else. I think you can exclude the midfield. I mean, no one's really going to have any of those three midfield in terms of FPO assets. It's going to be fullbacks, it's going to be uh, the three second players. Those guys will get rotated at some point. Okay, so that's something to bear in mind. Do we go for more 90 minute players just so we can guarantee maybe the clean sheets, etc.? Um, you know, there's an example where Liverpool might be three at half time, Trent start the game, he's got no contribution, so he's sitting on one point. They've got a big away Champions League game away to Paris Saint Germain. Maybe on the Tuesday, he might decide to take off Robbo, he might take off uh, Trent. They've both just picked up one point. They bring on Simicast and might bring on Gomez. That's something we've got to consider. OK, that's what I mean by maybe a target in 90 minute men's centre us maybe might be more important than maybe a fullback or a wingback, you know. So do we target the likes of Van Dijk over the fullbacks? Do we target Thiago Silva or Jules Koundé if he signs for Chelsea over a Reese James or Ben Chilwell, you know? Do we go for a Laporte over a Kinsella, for example? They're the things we've got to really, really you know, be mindful of and consider, okay? Um, another thing to sort of mention, which isn't on the graphic, is when do we use our wildcard, okay? So traditionally, I would say most, or there's a bit of a split, I would say, but the first the first wildcard, I think a lot of managers would use during the first international break, i.e. after game week three or four when the international break basically starts, to try and catch them price rises. And then obviously, you know, if there's certain players that aren't playing, you can get rid of those. There's just some enablers, get those in. You know, we've had John Lundstrom in the past. Um, you want to jump on them as soon as possible. That won't happen um, this season because there is no international break after sort of three or four game weeks. I think the first game week, um, so the first international break will be if there's there's going to be a couple of obviously uh, midweek games. So it could be up to maybe game week 10 before we actually use the wildcard if people want to use the price rises or try and catch the price rises during the international break. There could be a situation where after maybe game week three or four where we play on the or there's a game week on the Saturday finishes at the weekend and then people thinking actually do you know what we need to use a wildcard there but there's a round of midweek games so do you want to use your wildcard there there's this so for me straight away I think the wildcard is going to be there's going to be more hits to use at the beginning of the season because people don't want to use a wildcard until they've got a clear and concrete plan of 
of who's going to be playing regularly. So that might take 10 game weeks because it might take six weeks in terms of calendar time, but 10 game weeks because it's going to be midweek games and all sorts happening. So that's something to sort of bear in mind. It's really, really fascinating. When do we use our other chips as well? Do we, you know, there's obviously a lot of rhetoric at the moment in terms of what chips are going to be available for next season. Will it change a little bit? Will we have the bench boost, triple captain, et cetera? There's loads of, loads of stuff happening at the moment. So, Guys, I'm going to leave it there. Please let me know in the comment sections below what do you think, how the game is going to be changed, how are you at your, this early stage, maybe with dissecting the information I've sort of passed on, how you're thinking about playing the game, how it affect you, will it affect you at all, are you just going to adapt as you go along? Um, yeah, let me know in the comment sections below. Um, if you haven't liked this video already, please do so, and please consider clicking the notification bell and subscribing to our channel. We invite in new subscribers daily. We try and post two videos a week. During the FPL season, will be one video of FPL content, and then the second video will be football-related, as I do run my own football coaching business. So there'll be compilation videos, coaching sessions, tactics, ball analysis, all that good stuff.